Hello, I'm Colin McQuiston and I'm the Head of Climate and Resilience at Practical Action. Today is the final official day of the Climate COP. It's been a difficult two weeks, a roller coaster of a ride with hints of progress followed by points of order blocking agreement. The review of the Warsaw International Mechanism on the first day of the COP appeared to offer an opportunity for progress on loss and damage. We must recognise that for many people, especially for the poorest in developing countries, the irreversible climate change is happening now. In the form of more frequent and more intense storms, as well as slow onset events such as sea level rise eroding assets. It's not just lives and livelihoods that are suffering, we're also losing heritage, biodiversity and cultural values. That is why at COP25 I had hoped that finance for the Warsaw International Mechanism would finally come to fruition. That in the negotiating halls the global community would agree to develop a funding mechanism within the Green Climate Fund architecture dedicated to loss and damage an additional fund that would be financed using the polluter pays principle. A fund to address the complex impacts of irreversible climate change. As well as money to finance a just transition so that fossil fuel industry employees can be reskilled and transitioned to new jobs as part of a gr cleaner, greener global economy. A mechanism that mobilises finance and capacity that helps people in the poorest country when climate fueled disaster strikes. Not just in the immediate aftermath, but provides long-term support to compensate people for their lost incomes, lost assets. A fund that supports them while they slowly rehabilitate. We know this takes time and requires a long-term caring approach, not just a single payment or handout. The people of Mozambique, Zimbabwe and Malawi are still picking up the pieces after Cyclone Idai and Cyclone Kenneth battered them in April and May of this year. I believe the global community recognises our shared responsibility as custodians of this planet, holding it in trust for the next generation. This requires us supporting one another in times of hardship. So in these final hours of COP25, developed country government negotiators must recognise this need and please stop trying to block a deal on loss and damage. Then we can all convert our energy from the negotiations to actually implementing loss and damage in COP26 in Glasgow. Thank you.